Hello. Japes and jests. Drinkish. Oh, I forgot to tweet. Hold on. Just need a quick tweet. Crying cat. Finish Pentiment. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Nauseous Snake. Thank you, Newmore. Good morning, France. Congratulations. It's an Irish um, sour. It's an Irish sour made with Meyer lemons, which just became available. Thank you, Retro Man. Uh oh. Finished Act Two. Things happened. Is the music too loud? I have, the sound balance is always really weird on streams. White Russian with oat creamer. Nice, I should try that. Let me turn it down a skosh. Let me, all right, I'm still experimenting. I need, still need to get um, NVIDIA broadcast. I looked it up tonight. I at least looked it up tonight. <laughs> all right. All right, here we go. Irish sour. Okay, cool. I'm going to let Sesame in. She's being a brat. Thank you, Refax. I'm still trying to work out this arm. I don't know. What's up, Sess? Guten Tag. Oder Abend. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, so I did, I think I said last time, I did a, um, I've been doing a lot of interviews and recently I did um, an interview for Friends Per Second and it was mostly with Lucy James and I went back and watched it and every every time it showed her, her image quality and her lighting and her audio were all really good and every time it cut to me, it was just pure dog shit across the board. <laughs> so I asked her about audio setups and she suggested... Um, she suggested, uh, yeah, this guy, the um, Wave 3, Elgato Wave 3. But um, I don't have any sound canceling stuff. So I still, if I tippy tap, it's going to be, it's going to be loud. Just get ready. There's going to be some loud tipping and tapping. Sesame, do you want to come up here or what? Come here. Come here. Mm-hmm. Is this what you wanted? I think so. What? Yeah, everyone can hear you purr now. Whereas with the old setup, they couldn't. Well, thank you, Cole DB. 
Glad you enjoyed the interview. What are you doing, Turbo Cat? What are you doing, Turbo Cat? Is this what you need? Yes. All right, hold on. Let me get let me get rolling here. Sesame, Sesame, what are you doing? Hey, calm down. What are you doing? No one knows what's going on right now. You're causing the drama on the stream. What? What do you think about this? What if I did this to you? What if I did this? What would you think about that? Would you like it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Craigslist bike ad reviews, it's coming. All right, I think we're done. Can you go up on your little stand and I can turn on the cat cam? And everyone will love you even more. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh you played Pentiment as a date night? Awesome. Sesame, what are you going to do? Why don't you go up on your little stand? This song is from the Pentiment soundtrack. I'm going to pause the soundtrack right now, though. Because it's bike time. That's Brother Rudiger's song from the uh, church. In Act 1. Drinking an Irish sour. Irish whiskey, Meyer lemon juice, two and a half ounces of Irish whiskey, one ounce of Meyer lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, some Mr. Fee foaming agent, dry shaken, then add ice, shake for eight to 10 seconds, pour over ice. Pillars is unity. Okay, you gotta you gotta calm down. You gotta figure out what you want to do in life, Sesame. It can't be just that. Fee Brothers, yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Fee. I don't I just got it like a little while ago, so. Okay, let's see here. Um let's get into it. Sess doesn't know what she wants. Why don't you go up in your little perch? All right, so we're just going to be looking at bike ads. Not all of them. Ones that I want to look at. Um, just stuff that I want to look at, and then we can talk about it. So I'm going to look at this because some, someone listening a randony. What's up? What's going on? Why are the images not loading? Strange. Um, you know what? Let me... Let's just see what Rivendells are available because I keep looking at I keep looking at Rivendells. So this is an interesting bike. Hi Sheev. Well, my nephew is here, everyone. Sheev, say everyone say hi to Sheev. What are you crying about? What in the world do you have to cry about? So I like, see if I can find a Tomasini. I'll check it out. Let me scale this up a little bit for ease. All right, good night, Refax. So Rivendell, Rivendell is a company in Walnut Creek, California. 
run by a guy named Grant Peterson. And he likes, he's kind of fuddy-duddy. He likes real uh, traditional stuff. Steel only, lugged steel, no disc brakes, relaxed geometry. Easy gearing. So one thing that's nice is that a few years, they do have step through, a lot of step through frames, which get weirdly called like girls frames. So they have this frame, which they didn't really help because they called the Betty Foy. So it's like a woman's name. <laughs> but then because people were like, well, it's a Betty Foy. So then they made an, a version that was identical, but with a different paint scheme called the Eve Gomez, which they're cool bikes, um, but I think they have some kind of confused naming and stuff. Hold on a second. And, but they're cool. They're, they're nice. I like stuff through frames. You just get made fun of for having a girl's bike. It's it's dumb. I, I, I want to get a nice, I call, well, you can call them mixed. Technically, if it's two, two top tubes coming down, this one is a little unique or not unique, but like, it's not a traditional mixed M I X M I X T E mixed frame because it has a single top tube going down and then splitting into two stays. Is there any disadvantage to a step through frame? Stiffness is lower. Um, so the frame stiffness is lower. A traditional diamond frame is inherently fairly stiff, but because the top tube goes back here and that's just a little more rigid. So the disadvantage is, is that it's less stiff, I guess. Um, but I think that's exaggerated because the, the problem is that because Meeks were associated with like women's bikes or city bikes, they were often made of not great steel. So they were like heavy, but they weren't stiff in the right way. No, no, no. Mm. Mm -mm. Bye. No. Farewell. Um, I'm not looking to buy a bike. I'm just always looking. I'm just always looking at bikes. So this is a nice, this is a nice bike in a nice frame. This is very typical on Rivendell bikes. They often have cork grips with twine wrapping. And then these are bar end shifters. I have a similar setup on one of my bikes. <coughs> uh, always looking at synthesizers, Sheev. Very good. The hunt, you always gotta be on the hunt. So this is nice. The cork is just, it's a real comfortable, it's real comfortable. A lot of times you'll see them shellacked. I did shellac a pair and I don't think they um, worked very well. Even though they, they wear more when you don't shellac them, but the, the grip quality is better. Nice Nito stem. I think those are silver brakes, maybe. See a Betty Foy. These Nito front racks are really nice. These are Japanese. Um, Nito, Nito makes, they make handlebars, they make seat posts, and they make um, front racks, or I'm sorry, racks. And they're generally really, really nice. Hope to live in a bike-friendly city someday. Me too. <laughs> This is a pretty nice setup. He's got a nice rear rack here. Or they have a nice rear rack. Um, looking for your first ever bicycle soon. Very good. Fenders, sometimes important. These have these nice little heart cutouts in the lugs, which are really sweet. Nice little accents. I like this color combination. Yeah, Betty Foy's are cool. They're cool frames. What size is this? 55? No, thank you. Bye. Can't, can't write it. All right. Um, so this thing never worked, so goodbye. And then we got this dude. 
I'm gonna look up a Tomasini. Tomasini. Oh wait, it's Tomasini. Tomasini, that's right. No Tomasinis. Did I spell that right? Yeah. No Tomasinis. Gee whiz. So this is another Rivendell. This is a more road style. So this diamond frame is stiffer than a mixed. But this is this is like a road bike, but it has clearance for bigger tires. So you can kind of use it for riding fire trails or light, light gravel, dirt, stuff like that. It's not like a mountain bike, but it's it gives you you can have a you can have a larger tire running at lower pressures with a bigger contact patch and the tire can probably run knobs and things like that. So you haven't found any bikes that work with pure ice so that makes your city unbikeable. Well, you can, uh, uh, what is it called? Is the moon moon? It's not the moon unit. Is it? Hold on just a second. We're going to take a look at the Surly website. Here we go. Yeah, it's not a great time to ride bikes in Wisconsin. All right, hold on. I thought they had a um, ice cream truck. Cram is it Krampus? Is that what I'm thinking of? Hmm. I thought they had something called like a moon patrol or something. Is it like a surly moon moonlander? That's right, a surly moonlander. Here we go. Here we go, buddy. There, there we go. <laughs> The weather here is nice. The weather here was like in the morning, it was, I think, low 50s, and it got up to um, high 60s, I think. Pretty nice. So, yeah, you can get a Moonlander. You can run these at very low pressures. You run the tires at very low pressures, and then you can, um, you can, put, you can put studs in these and then you have a really nice you have a really big contact patch running at a low pressure with studs the pack rack got discontinued mm. you're moving to rural oregon where in rural oregon or is that a is that secrets oh because you got a job congrats by the way corvallis I knew some people who lived in Corvallis, and I think I know someone who lives near Corvallis now. I, I, man, so a couple of years ago, I took a short tour in, um, I went up the Alfter Heidi Trail, or road. It's like the highway. It's like central South Oregon. It's, God, what is it near? It's not near anything really of note. It's not super far north from California. Um, but yeah, I did a ride on the Alter Heidi trail or road, that highway going up and I camped up there and it was, it was beautiful. It was in, it was in mid October. Very pretty. What did, what role did I play in the dev of outer worlds? I designed the hunting rifle and tuned it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Harney? No, that doesn't sound familiar. But yeah, Moonlander. So Moonlander runs four, 4 4.8 inch tires on 100 millimeter rims. Really low pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So like you can watch, um, Hold on. I don't want these ads. Let's go. But yeah, this is this is the good shit. This is like 
Yeah, look at this. This is this is the stuff, man. Look at that. Nice. It's good. The problem I have when I go back to Wisconsin to ride is um, I cannot keep my hands or my um, I can't keep my hands or my feet uh, warm at all, and it sucks. Mm. Anything at the Game Awards that got me excited? I'm always real skeptical until I see gameplay, and I didn't see a ton of stuff with gameplay where I was like, oh yeah, that's I'm excited now. Could also wait a few more years until there's no more snow or ice ever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As the Florence and the Machine song goes. Hades 2. Was there stalker gameplay? Anywho, back to this. This is kind of what is um, like it's an all-rounder. So you can run bigger tires. He's got like a triple, like three chain rings on this. Fairly decently, not a wide range cassette, but like combined with this, you have a big gear range. You can put racks on it if you want, but I think this dude just kind of uses it for chilling. Like, like comfy, comfy riding, comfy road riding. Hades getting a sequel surprised you? Yeah, first Supergiant sequel. I think wasn't Hades quite successful by, um, by uh, Supergiant standards? Massive success. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then it makes sense. Just make another one. If they're into it, if, if they want to make it and people want to buy it, go for it. So, I mean, I know a lot of people liked it. I just didn't know how it sold. I assume it sold well. Mongoose BMX, very good. So yeah, this is nice. I like this paint scheme. Um, Rivendell has all their bikes made by a variety of companies. They don't manufacture them. They design and spec them. And then Waterford makes a lot of their frames or a fair number of their frames. Waterford is in Wisconsin. Um, they make fantastic frames. I have two Waterford frames that are very nice. Um, and then Toyo. And I think there's another American manufacturer that maybe makes some. And then they have some Taiwanese manufacturers that are also very good. So yeah. And they also, the Rivendells have goof ass names like A. Homer Hilson. So like, whatever. All right, we're done with this. Um, there's a platypus frame set. The platypus, let's look at the Rivendell platypus. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, what made me put such a big focus on food and pentiment? Appreciated being able to tell who is better off based on what they ate. It was kind of that. It's um, I wanted people. I wanted to kind of force players to spend time with different people that might not necessarily be part of the quests, and just to get to know them and how they lived and their family dynamics. And then um, the food was extremely instrumental in showing just how they ate and what they ate or did not eat, and how different people with different levels of wealth. Uh, Eight. They went to the U school of naming things. So yeah, the platypus, they always have goof ass head badges, which I love. I love head badges. They're so good. But yeah, it's a step through. So it's not quite a mixed, but this is kind of almost like a Betty Foy in a way. It doesn't quite have the same construction, but it's similar. It's a step through. It has those heart cutouts, which are nice. I think that's a Sonic Seed crank there, or Rene Ayers. Either way, it's really nice. Yeah, these are very pretty. Platypus. <laughs> they always got to put, like, goof-ass <laughs> stuff on it. But, yeah, they're nice. They're pretty cool. I like platypuses. 
Maybe I should get a platypus. That's a nice color to it. Is that like a green? Kind of looks like a green. All right, what else we got? What sort of bike should we look up? I'm drifting here. Let me see if there are any new Mercs. I looked up Mercs earlier and it was, I was not happy. Amazing. It's the 10th. This is new. I didn't see that this morning. Okay. This is nice. Eddie Mercs. Why is there a Playboy logo on this? Oh boy, this what what model is this? Team. Up for sale is an amazing old Eddie Merckx road bike that is from a small Belgian race team in the 80s. Custom was done in the Merckx factory for the team and is all original. So this was built in the Merckx factory. So for a long, so Eddie Merckx, if you don't know, all right, now we're going to do some deep diving. So this is Eddie Merckx. Extremely, extremely successful road cyclist, track cyclist. Um, like he had the hour, hour record. Does he still hold the hour record? No. Um, the British fucking dude beat him. <laughs> but he had the, the hour record on the track for a long time, I think. They called him the cannibal. He's still alive. I mean, he's not racing, obviously, but um, but he's from sort of the the end of the the heroic age of of cycling. But so Eddie Merckx, when when cyclists got um, a fully built Velo Orange Neutrino that someone's selling on the cheap specifically for you. By the way, I just I'm going to show some components in a bit. That. Um, Oh, you know what? You can't, you guys can't even see these cool pictures because my, hold on just a second. Let me, um, I got the components today because they were a really good deal. And then after I got them, I realized I can use them to build a super sick neutrino. I have a neutrino frame. I bought a neutrino frame in 2018 and it's been sitting in my office <laughs> at work because I didn't have the components to build it up, but I can do it now. So we'll come back to that. But yeah, Eddie Merckx, when cyclists become famous, or at least um, when they used to, you could bank on that and you could make, um, you could make, you could make bikes, you could make all sorts of shit. Um, and at first Merckx, Eddie Merckx didn't do his own frame building. That was done by Ugo de Rosa. So DeRosa, an Italian builder, built all of the Merck's bikes. They were built in the DeRosa factory, but they were branded as Eddie Merck's bikes. And uh, he's cool. He's just, well, maybe he's not cool as a human being, but he's, <laughs> he's certainly an interesting figure in cycling. Yeah, Eddie Merck's hour record, 1972. I think that stood for a long time. All right, anyway. So... Over time, eventually, I think Merck's got his own factory um, in Belgium. So this this is cool. A lot of the Mercs have this red, white, and blue scheme. I'm fond of it. One of my bikes has a similar, like that type of red, almost that blue. It's a little lighter. Oh man, there are all sorts of crazy nicknames for cyclists. No, it's not before steroids got in the mix. Merck's almost certainly was doping. People were doping. People were doping in the 30s. People were doping in professional cycling in the 30s. They were much less sophisticated, but they were also much less. Um, uh, there was like no testing. So like Fausto Coppi just straight up said like, oh, yeah, I'm doing like amphetamines all the time. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm on amphetamines. I race on amphetamines. No big deal. Copy, Foster Copy was uh, 50s and 60s, I think.
But yeah, this is a cool paint scheme. Why is there a Playboy logo on this? Was this team like sponsored by Playboy? <laughs> 13 hours into Pentiment. Thank you very much, El Greco. Columbus tubing. Columbus is nice. And note that it has this, this little dude right here, this little, um, you know, this tab. That's for erasing um, like number or tag. So it's actually incorporated into the frame, which is cool. But yeah, this has to be the 80s because they still have down tube shifters. These are Shimano indexed down tube shifters, which indexed shifting kind of came along in the 80s. I'm trying to think if I'm lying. That's when it became really dominant, but they still didn't have integrated shifters. They were still all down tube. So it, was, it wasn't until like the 90s or something where you started maybe late nineties, where you started getting, um, brifters, brake shifters, where the shifting happens at the, at the brake lever. Chrome is in good condition. Dura Ace. Gotta love it. Shimano Dura Ace. The highest, highest level of Shimano. Altegra, I think is just below it. It's a road racing cassette. Dura Ace, Dura Ace, man, this is, this is like a professional racing setup, like no fucking around. Ooh, what is that? What is that saddle? That's a beaut. What a pretty bike. What a nice paint scheme. Very well maintained. Thank you, Homs. Wowee, look at that. There's no... Wow. What a beautiful bike. Yeah, how much is this? $24.50. That's less than I would have guessed, to be honest. Way too small for me. 54 centimeters. This would be for someone like 5... <coughs> 3, maybe? The group is full Dura Ace along with custom hand built wheels with Dura Ace hubs. Damn. When building up this bike, everything is pretty new, old stock, or in mint condition. Bike is an amazing ride. It could just be, it might. Sometimes I buy bikes that I can't ride. I buy bikes that don't fit me, but I really want to build them. They're really pretty. So I do that sometimes. And then I sell them. I'm like, well, <laughs> somebody can ride this. Finish Pentiment over Thanksgiving is one of the best games you played this year. Thank you very much. All right. We this is this is a good. This what earlier when I looked up Merckx's, there were not any good ones. They're pretty I don't care about this. By the way, I'm not going to look at any carbon fiber or aluminum bikes. I do not give a shit. I fucking hate that garbage. What is up with all the images t tonight? How tall are you? Sheev. I haven't seen you in a while. Bill Clinton, 5'8". Yeah, you could... Yeah, you could probably ride a 56 or a 57. Why? What is... Show me. Yeah, what's the deal? This looks like a nice bike, but I don't know why the thing is not working. That's not what I wanted. Let's try this. What the? Oh, these are multiple bikes. Little giant mountain bike you ride around. Thank you, Penneth. Kenneth Matthew. <laughs> that's nice. Okay, that's a s extra Corsa Extra, I think. Hold on, what is it? Yeah, Corsa Extra. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, hold on, let's see here. Corsa Extra. 
That's a Shimano 600 crank tricolor. I'm pretty sure. Are these pictures? Yeah, that's a Shimano. Uh, yeah, I think so. This is in really good condition too. Wowee. I would expect this paint to be just eaten up back here. This is a Paramount. This is a 90s Schwinn Paramount. I'm not as big of a fan of the 90s Paramounts, but they are still lugged, which is nice. I think these were made at Waterford, which is cool. It's got the matching frame pump. I bet that was added later. One of the nice things about Waterford, I mean, Waterford is a cool company, but um, you can send them, if you have like an old Schwinn Paramount that was Waterford built, you can send it back to them and they will fully restore it and also do like modifications to the frame, which is fucking sick. I have two Paramounts. I have a 1968 track frame and I have a, um, hold on just a second here. Hi, Mataratas. So that's, that's a 1968 Schwinn Paramount P14, which is a track frame. And I had it repainted um, with a deep metal flake, pink and blue. And those are Neato, those are steel Neato track bars. Thank you, Hummel Grundle. Um, this is, it's not strictly vintage because these are modern components. So that's a Pearl, Neato Pearl. The headset is a vintage Campagnolo. These hubs, I think, are Paul hubs. That's an IRD Defiant track crank. These rims are vintage. These are uh, FIR Italian rims. Tubeless. These are 22 millimeter Continental Sprinter tires. That is a reproduction Chinelli Unicanator plastic saddle. How much does the bike weigh? I want to say it weighs like 14 pounds or something. It's pretty light. It's not as like insanely light, but it's pretty damn light. And it's got, it's still, I still had the Schwinn Paramount head badge, which is really, they're really expensive. <laughs> if you if you don't have them, they're very expensive to replace. But yeah. I am still at Obsidian and I did not really work on Grounded. As with any team, I give advice, but that's it. This is my other Schwinn Paramount. This is a 1972 P13. This is a road bike. You got a Klein frame. Kleins are interesting. Kleins are some of the few aluminum bikes that I think are cool. I don't generally like aluminum bikes. Super go, nice. Yeah, I love, I, I mean, I love building bikes. I just have, I have a folder because I was showing a friend all the garbage that I built. Um, for Marjorie, how's the fee foam working? I think pretty well. I'm not like a foam nut, but it seems like it works pretty well. Not much of a bike guy. What's wrong with aluminum? Um, all right. So like, so it's not that there's anything necessarily wrong with aluminum. I just don't like certain things about them. Um, aluminum frames tend to be, the frame itself is harsher than steel because it's, it's aluminum, it's stiffer, it's lighter, which is good. 
Um, aluminum, the way that aluminum is generally formed into tubes for bikes and welded is often ugly to me. I just think they don't look good. Um, yeah, I just don't prefer it. I just don't like it. <laughs> I'd prefer steel or titanium because titanium is more expensive and more complicated than aluminum, but it is, it has some really interesting properties and you can, um, you can basically have titanium frames in the same overall aesthetic as a steel frame. What if you could go custom with your design if it was aluminum? No. I mean, yes, but I like how steel bikes look. I like, I like this. I like, I like this. I like that. I like the way that looks. You're going to make your pipe frames out of lead pipes. Sounds good. But yeah, these are two, two Schwinn's. This one was built in Racine and the other one was built in Chicago. Sinbad. Yep. There is a Miller. There is a Miller quarrel in there. For Marjorie, I really like what some drops of bitters on the foam does for a sour. You know, I haven't really tried that. I think because I dropped such a big like piece of ice into this, you can't, that's not helping at all. I had a big chunk of ice in there and I wasn't really, the ice was right at the top. So if you get a Schwinn, Brad Pitt will laugh at you. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. All right, we're going to look at something else. All right, so he's got, what else has he got? Okay, so it's the Mercs, the Paramount. You don't know shit about biking. Is there a good bike to start out with that isn't very expensive specialized? What do you want to do with your bike, fanboy? Tell me what you want to do and what what you consider the upper end of your budget. Oh, this is a uh, specialized Alley. That is another, I think, Shimano 105. Or maybe that's Sun Tour. Let's find out. Um, I can't tell. I think that might be Sun Tour. Um, I rode a mongoose when I was a little kid, a little bit, yeah. But I didn't get like super into BMX. That's cool. I think these are all a little too small for me. They're all in Palm Desert, not that far away. I know Cannondale. Cannondales were some they made some of these early aluminum bikes. Um, I had a girlfriend who had a Cannondale, aluminum Cannondale. It was actually pretty decent, to be honest. Mostly road and light trail. And like, what's expensive to you? Because that, I mean, like, everyone has a different, like, what's expensive to me versus some other person versus some other person. It's very different thousand you can get a great bike for a thousand or less i would say though that buying new that gets a little tricky if you want to spend a grand there are so many good used bikes though and buying used i know is scary and tricky but even if you find a bike that you kind of like if you just look for a used version of it so much less money but there's a lot of there's a lot of bikes you can get for a grand that are pretty decent. Oh, 62. Yeah, you're look you're yeah, you're going to have to find like a 60 like a 59 to 62 centimeter frame. So you're looking for 59 to 62 centimeter frames if you're you're my height.
got your last synth for 150 off retail because you bought used. Yeah, I think the thing is like, you know synths really well. I know bikes pretty well. So it's a lot easier for me to find stuff where I'm like, that's good, that's not good. I found some killer thing. You know what? Let's it's time to let's look at some stuff. All right. We're gonna we're now gonna look at stuff that I got today. All right, first of all, I got some gloves. Same with books. Yep. Man, especially with those super academic books. I bought for Pentiment, I bought so much super used stuff that was way, way, way cheaper. So these are nice. These are um, goatskin gloves. Knit. Comfy. I think I, these were like 15 bucks. I think new these are 50 or 60. I don't buy new leather stuff. Actually, I shouldn't say that. It's extremely rare. I don't like buying animal product stuff. But I have to admit, leather is um, leather is a really good material. So if I find something that is, uh, these are for riding. These are would be useful for like touring or even road biking, because they breathe in the back, and then the the leather is a really good material. So if I find if I find good leather saddles or gloves, sometimes I'll get them if they're lightly used. Um, yeah, it's more of summer riding. This is a Richie stem. <clears throat> I'm trying to do the thing that they all do. TR, that's Tom Richie. So this is a 27.2 millimeter stem, but um, it was cut. <laughs> so it's kind of a short stem, but I think there's enough here that it could be pretty useful. It's in really nice condition. I got it for, this was 15 bucks. Pretty good. Locks? What about locks? Archery can't avoid animal products. Yeah. This is a Neato Technomic stem. I love these stems. So they're nice because they have a really, they're really tall. So you can get a lot of rise. And then this is a 130 millimeter reach. So if you have some really swept back handlebars, this is a really good offset. This was another, um, this was another like $15, I think, stem or something. This is, I want to say this is like a $70 stem new. <coughs> yeah, real leather is actually better. I know, I just, it's more of a feel. It's more of a feel thing than a rational thing. So these, these are fucking sick. So these are Chris King hubs. Come on. Chris King hubs, 32 disc hubs, 32 spoke disc hubs. Um, so the stem is the stem is what attaches the uh, handlebars to the frame through the headset. So the stem comes up and goes over. And then it, so at the front of the bike, this is the head tube and this goes in the head tube and then the handlebars go through here and hang off of that. But these are Chris King. These were not cheap, but they're very expensive normally. Let's look up some. Let's take a little look here. Wahoo Trainer. I've not used a Wahoo Trainer, but I used a, um, a kicker. I used a kicker trainer for a while. And it seemed pretty good, but I really didn't like being on a trainer. So this is, what is this, an R4? What am I looking at? This looks like a, what is this, technically? Um, this might be an older. So this is probably the equivalent here. This guy, oh, you can't even see that. What am I doing? Hold on, sorry. So, yeah. But look at these hubs. Look at this fucking shit, dude. 
$534 for a rear hub. And this is the front. So these two hubs combined are probably, so that's 305. It's like $825 worth of hubs. 260. Got them for 260 bucks, baby. That's the art of the deal. It's a really good deal. These hubs fucking rock ass. Like, so these are, these are made in the US. These are made in Portland. Chris King, they make headsets. They made, they make bottom brackets. Are the bikes I build racing or performance based? Not really. They're more like endurance, endurance road riding and touring. That's kind of what I do. But yeah, and these are uh, six bolt uh, disc brakes. Um, but like 800, and these have been built up once. Like you can see that, the, well, I can see. These have been built up once but they look like they've barely been used. 260, baby. Okay, so that's that. Now here's some fun stuff. Oops, hold on. Me tree. It's a patch for me tree, which I love. Another Butte, love Sequoia. I'm thinking I might give this to Kate, my friend Kate, who was a writer on Pentiment. I think she'd like it. Um, so those are nice. Those were, I think these were $16 for the three of them. That was good. And then these guys. Some cork grips. I like these. They're shellacked, but they have a nice texture to them. They don't feel overly slick. And I, I think these were 10. Nice. Um, okay, dude, get ready for this shit. Because this is my coup de gras of the day. Hold on. More white industries. Excuse me. Hello. This is a white industries single speed with an eccentric axle. If you don't know things about bikes, you will not fucking care, but let me fucking tell you. So, okay. Hold on. Check this shit out. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so look at this, Waterford, nice. Oh, you can't see it. Look, hold on. Okay, so this is what is called a vertical dropout. A dropout is what the wheels, what the axle of the wheel sits in. So imagine that the hub goes between these two points. And when it's, when they're horizontal, you can move the wheel back and forth, but it's like a not, it's, it's a little weird because the wheel can shift under torque and it's whatever. So most road bikes, most bikes period that aren't track bikes now have vertical dropouts. What's nice about vertical dropouts is that when the axle slides in, it can't move, <clears throat> it can't move back and forth. So that's nice because it's very stable. Like if the wheel is true, it's going forward and it's awesome. 
But the problem is if you run a single speed that doesn't have a derailleur or a tensioner, you, it's hard to keep the chain tensioned. So what you can do with the eccentric hub that is fucking sick as shit is you can change the, the location of the axle within the hub to tension the chain. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> because if you can't get that chain tension right, then either your chain is typically going to be too slack. And the other nice thing is that if you change your sprocket or if you run a double in the back, because White Industries also makes something called a dose Eno that has two cogs, you can change the chain, you can move the chain and then you can, sh you can turn the eccentric um, axle and it re retains its tension. So here's the thing. Okay, so... No, I don't fucking care about that. I want to see it on their site. Just show me on their site. Um, Eno single speed hubs. Eno disc. Do they? Oh, yeah. Okay. So... So, so this is a two hundred and third two hundred and forty dollar um sorry hub, and then the matching one, so it's they're together, they're probably like four hundred dollars. so. These two hubs, so these two hubs, come on, help me out here. These two hubs, which have never been built, because you can see by the spoke holes, they've never been built. Hundred bucks, dude. Hundred dollars. That's fucking crazy. Like, that's the most insane deal that I've gotten in, like, so long. Hundred bucks. So now what I'm going to do though, <laughs> get ready for this. Built mean put into a bike. No, built means that spokes were put around it and it was built into a wheel. So if you build up hubs into a wheel, you put spokes through the spoke holes and lace them to a rim. So, oops, sorry about that. But, so what I'm going to do Check this shit out. Check this shit out, baby. What's going on? Is it dark mode doing this? So I want, I have one of these frames. It's a mini velo. So this is these, look at these guys. Look at this. Look at this guy. What are you doing? So this is a mini velo. Oh, you can't see any of this shit. God damn it. This is a mini velo. And so it has a very small frame with small wheels. And this is really good for traveling and keeping in like an apartment or taking on a train or a bus. So I have this frame, but I don't want to run a rear derailleur because I don't, I just don't want it to be complex, excuse me, complicated. But it has these vertical dropouts. So I'm gonna use the hubs that I just got to build it up and that way I can have a double in the back 
and then use that chain tensioner, or I can use the eccentric bottom bracket or not bottom bracket hub. Yes. Um, the tiny wheeled bikes, it's the advantage is that they're small. Like this bike is actually really little. Front to back, it's way smaller than a normal bike. Like these are, I want to say like 20 inch wheels compared to 27 inch ish wheels from a 700 C bike. Why don't go a full folding bike? Could, I don't know. I thought about folding bikes as well. I thought about, um, I thought about folding bikes. I thought about a breakaway frame, but I wanted to try a mini velo so that it's basically just a, a kind of a standard, like a non-split frame, a non-hinged frame. These can stay pretty lightweight. And so I can run this essentially single speed with that tensioner from the eccentric hub. And that's going to be cool. I think because I don't want to deal with all the derailleur and everything. So I have a travel bag, which is really nice. And I used it with a single speed for a while, but it was just, the bike was kind of a, a too big. It was kind of a hassle because I'm tall. So it causes some issues, but I'm going to use those new hubs. It's not going to be a fixie. It's going to be a, it's going to, I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to use one of these. So White Industries makes something called a Dose Eno. <clears throat> it's like a it's like a single speed freewheel, but it actually has two cogs. But to change the cog, you have to move the hub, or you have to loosen the wheel and move the chain, uh, which I've used before, and it's actually pretty nice. And with the tensioner, then it keeps the tension. It should be it should be cool. I think it'll be really nice. So I'm excited about that, but I got one more thing. So this is, this is the other nice one. Hold on. So this is a white industries M30 crank. And it has, oops, it came with a Chris King bottom bracket and it's used, but those are both really, really nice components. Um, I think together there it's like $750 and it was like two, uh, two fifty. So one third, the price really nice, really, really nice. Those are all of the things that I got today. Pretty happy. I saved a ton of money. I can use all this shit. It's going to be, so good. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, this is just an easier way to like, because if you, if you put the crank on normally, then it's like twice as big. But if you put it on this way, it's actually kind of like somewhat compact. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm pretty happy. What you meant to ask is, Okara, what you meant to ask is, am, am I more into the mechanical screwy side of biking or do I drive as much as you tinker? Um, I think I ride more than I work on bikes now. But I don't ride as much as I used to. I need to ride more. But I've had, I've had a lot of health problems this year. <laughs> it's made it hard. It's made it hard to exercise consistently. It's been very frustrating. So... All right. All right. Back to this nonsense. What else should we look up folks? I'm fielding suggestions. What do you want to see? What am I going to look up? What am I going to talk about? Mr. Ceviche. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I will look at that after the stream, but thank you for the link. That looks very interesting. Personally, your 
currently looking to custom full frame bags for, I'm assuming like a gravel or a touring bike. Recumbents. I don't know anything about recumbents. Search for the worst. The worst is pretty, I don't know. The, there's no, and there's no bottom. Let's, well, actually, hold on. I think this is a damaged Merck's frame. Hold on. The best bike suspensions you ever rode, the smoothest ride you ever had on the bumpiest surface. What is going on with all the images here? Yeah, this is a damaged Mercs. Gravel bike for a big trip coming up for you this summer. From Cologne to Italy and back after a few weeks. You know what? I am bummed because in 2019, I was going to go to Italy. I was going to go to Padua to do a talk. I've never been to Italy. And I was going to fly into Munich with my touring bike. Ride through the Brunner Pass, which is pretty close to where Tassing would be. Through Innsbruck and then south through Austria. And then into the Italian Alps and then down into Italy. I was going to do it, but then COVID. <laughs> so I didn't do it. Maybe I'll get another chance this year. We'll see. All right, let's look up. Um, thank you, Know Your Onions. Well, why are we so tired? I guess I have not been getting enough sleep. That's why. Let's look at this crust. Dude, what is going... Is this like a dark mode thing? Hold on. I'm going to try disabling dark mode. Whoa. Mm, that's not good. Weird. Okay. The secret zone is just a thing for hiding URLs. But now it's just this little buddy. Used to have a teacher that rode his bicycle from Belgium to France and camp along the way for the entire two weeks and came back. Nice. So this is a crust lightning bolt. I like crusts. I have a crust romance sewer. These are designed by, I want to say the guy who owns crust primarily is Australian. And then he collabs fairly often with ultra romance which, just so you know who Ultra Romance is. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is Ultra Romance. So he's like a cool guy, a cool guy of cycling. And he has very interesting tastes in... Um, in bikes <laughs> and things, but he's become kind of like a, a, a certain, certain type of cycling celebrity, but he lives in new England and uh, yeah, he collabs with the owner of crust on a bunch of different bike designs, which are pretty cool. <clears throat> so this is a crust lightning bolt, which is nice. This is hand, this is fillet brazed. And you can see when you see these little gold parts right here, that's brass. So the bike is fillet brazed. It's not lugged. So a lug is basically like a sheath piece that helps bond two pieces of tubing. And when it's brazed, the brass or silver flows into the lug and sort of like coats everything to bond them through capillary action. It bonds the two pieces of steel together. But it only, it's it's for steel bicycles. But this is steel, but it has brass fillet brazing. And fillet brazing is not using lugs. It is just using a fillet of brass to connect the pieces of steel. It's very pretty. And normally you can't see the fillets, but they chose to clear coat 
all of these frames, which usually I'm not a fan of, I've said before. But it's kind of pretty on this bike. It's pretty nice. Um, have I ever tried a titanium bike? Yes, I had a 7. Let me see if I... Where is my 7? I don't know if I have any pictures of my 7 anymore. I had a 7 Axiom, which was titanium. And that was nice. It was a nice bike. It was... My titanium bike was quite nice. I liked it. Uh-oh, walking outside your dorm room. How cold is it in Whitewater? Um, am I familiar with the survival? This is Hams. Josh, am I familiar with the survival game Unreal World? <clears throat> game developed since early 90s, recently released on Steam 2, set in the Iron Age Finland. Not something you got into, but the themes are interesting. I don't know. I don't actually know. Terrible for your anxiety. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm going to take a brief break. I'm going to make a drink and I'll be right back.
Hello. <clears throat> postmortem por excuse me, postmortem for dead fire for pentiment? <laughs> Gee whiz. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll probably do a talk of some sort. I don't know if I'll necessarily do a postmortem, but I'll prob probably give a talk at some point. <sighs> Schultz. Uh oh, Sesame's back. Hold on. What's up? What's up? Just hanging out. All right. Where you can get bigger gears for a Shimano cassette. You could just get a new cassette. Switching cassettes is really easy, Okara. Sheepish Pilot, do I ever get time to chill after a game release? I'm fairly chill right now. We do have a new patch coming very soon. Finally started through Deadfire. Very good. Awesome. Comfy bike wreck to ride to work. Um, it's not a boring question, but what's your price? What price range are you looking for? And, and how far? How far are you going to work? And in what weather? You kind of only really need the last gear to be bigger. Well, yeah, I mean, wait, it's a Shimano? I thought the whole thing with Shimanos is that every... I thought almost all their cassettes were just individual, or maybe that's just some of them. It is nice when they're all individual cogs because then you can make them whatever. Still need to play Pentiment so you can review it on TWT for you. Nice. 10 miles, LA weather. Wait, when you say LA, do you mean Los Angeles or Louisiana? Recently out of college budget. Mm. The lower gears are single, but the last three are one piece. Los Angeles. Well, Los Angeles is rough. Los Angeles is so rough to bike in, to be honest. You're willing to invest. Um, oh, the Shimano, hold on just a second. Very good to hear from Audrey. Okay. Wait, so 34 isn't big enough for you? What's your crank, Okara? Why don't you change the crank or one of the chain rings? It's probably easier to change a single chain ring. What's your what's your crank? Um Wild Peaks, I think that programming was working on figuring out a better implementation of um a better implementation of uh, mouse and keyboard together because a lot of people are playing mouse and keyboard. 4630. And, and 34 isn't big enough for you? Oh, uh, you wanted to have a 38 on the back. What's the crank? Also, what's your rear derailleur? Sorry, I'm getting real technical on this stuff. Sorry, we're gonna help. We're gonna help Oghara figure out his gearing. Shimano GRX 600. All right, hold on. So that's the whole group. Okay. Okay. Well, 
Um, here's the thing though. You're going to run into, okay. So let's say if you go from 34 to 40 and you do rear derailleur. Okay. This is okay. Right now we're getting into some fucking technical shit. RDRX 810D. Shimano GRX rear derailleur, 34 tooth max. So that's a problem right away. That is an issue. Now, granted, that's not always true, but that derailleur spec says that 34 tooth is the max low sprocket. So what you're going to run into a problem with, and sorry if you already know all this shit, but basically as this pull, as this, as the cable starts pulling this in and it pushes the pulley down, the pulley, the top pulley is not going to be able to clear a cog that's bigger than 34 teeth. Theoretically. The D screw has room. I have seen people, okay, run up to 40. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I still, I still feel like ultimately the simple thing is probably just to get a different cassette. Like, I don't think it's worth the hassle of trying to figure out a way to just replace the three top cogs. Well, the other thing is wrap. So what's the wrap on that? Hold on. Max front difference is 17 teeth. Why is wrap not listed here? Total capacity is 40 teeth. So it's a, okay, hold on. We're, we're working out, we're mathing this out. 11 to 34. So you have, thank you very much, System X95. So you have 23. And so you have 39. You are, so again, just because it's to be careful, you are one tooth away from hitting the max wrap of the rear derailleur. And even if people are fucking with the D screw to run it up to 40, if you run, if you run 11 to 40, so if you run 11 to 40, hold on, let me just work this out. Let's say it's 12. Let's say it's 13. Let's say you find a 13 to 40. So you have, oh, sorry, 40 minus 13. So you have 27 and a, it's a 4630. It's a 16 tooth. Yes, wrap is the difference the derailleur can handle. That would be over. Even with a 13 to 40, you're going to be three teeth over. So the problem there, what's going to happen is if, now granted, you, if you're very careful about not avoid, if, about avoiding cross training, you can, so, oh, shit. Can I do this? No, I can't show this. But basically, yeah. Like, basically, yeah. So, as the derailleur goes into the big ring in front and the bigger cogs in the back, the rear derailleur starts stretching. It gets low and it starts stretching forward to handle the chain stretching out over those big gears. And either what's going to happen is you will exceed that. So you will hyper extend the derailleur and you can break the derailleur because the derailleur is going to break before the chain. Um, or the other way, it folds back so far that the chain is dragging on the pulley, on the, on the top pulley, which is bad. So I don't know, man you're probably pushing it. So you, I don't know. It's a tricky thing. I get what you're going for though. I understand what you're going for. A triple almost might be better. You only want a 38. Well, hold on, hold on here. Let's see, let's see. Twenty-five. Okay, hold on. Let's. We can probably do this. Okay. Hmm. 
No, I don't fucking want that shit. And it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm sorry, it's a 11 speed. Is that what we're talking about? GRX? Is it 11 speed or 12 speed? Sorry. You said the cassette before. 11. I'll answer your question in a minute, Spiralette. I'm almost done here, I think. Let's see here. Hi, Igloo Squid. Oh, man. Yeah, I guess I would say is if you can find, you know what? If you can find an 11 speed Shimano compatible cassette that does 13 to 38, technically you're one tooth over, but as long as you avoid max wrap, you're probably fine. <clears throat> or something like that. That's the best I can think of. Okay, here's... Well, this is silly. But yeah, I just found this can. Hold on. This is probably too expensive. This is like a titanium. This is ridiculous. But here's an 11... Well, that's 11 to 38. I don't know. I just... I think that's probably your best bet. The other thing would be switching chain rings, and that seems like a bigger hassle. But cassette switching cassettes is so easy. I know it's a it's an extra cost, but like you can just if you just spin the lock ring off, slide it off, put a zip tie through it so you don't lose any of that shit, and then put the new one on. And I think that's probably your best bet. But you you really do not want to exceed wrap because I've fucked with that before. Doesn't end well. Fucks your whole bike up potentially. So, all right. So that's that spiralette. I'm from a city with a high crime rate and bikes being stolen is pretty common. Hasn't happened to me yet, but I'm anxious about leaving it chained pretty much anywhere. Is there anything you can do to recommend someone without much experience biking? <coughs> do you have, so you have a bike. What is your bike? Why don't you lie down? Just lie down. Hold on. There we go. You're welcome, Wakara. Sorry I can't be of more help, but it's it's a tricky situation just because of the wrap of the rear derailleur and it's you know, it's it's like you, you have to you gotta consider the the chain rings in the front, the gap between the chain rings, the cassette size in the back the max cog in the, in the rear derailleur and then the max wrap. And it's just like, it's a lot. Sess cam. It's because she kept sitting up there and no one could see her. Um, how involved was I in making alpha protocol? Um, not very. I just worked on the close quarters combat system pretty deep into development. You know what? Hold on just a second. I feel like I completely, ign not ignored, but I got derailed for a second for quite a while. Someone was asking about Cyber June. I'm sorry, Cyber June. 10 miles LA weather recently out of college budget. Willing to invest. Um... So Cyber June, are you going to be on streets or trails? Oh, okay, Spiralette. Um, if you could get a folding bike, I would suggest looking into a folding bike, such as, and they're expensive, Bromptons. I'm going to look up a Brompton right now. Streets most likely. So Bromptons are folding bikes and they can get real tiny. They're little, little guys. So they can fold. So you can, it's like, 
if you don't have room to put one of these guys, you like, okay, I, I don't know what to tell you. But if, if you really, 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 really want to just keep the bike from being stolen, do not, do not leave it outside. That's it. Like anyone I've known who's lived in like San Francisco or New York city, if, which have a lot of bike theft, um, they just have to, they're very comfortable to ride. Um, you got to keep them, you got to keep them indoors. You just have to keep them indoors. Now, obviously someone can break into your place and steal it, but if a bike is on the street and if it's not, even if it's, if it's, I would lose my mind. I would not be able to do that. So yeah, like, you know, people I've known who live in San Francisco and New York, they, they generally just make room for their bike inside and a folding bike is a perfect way to do that. What? Video processor, that's not what I want. But yeah, check this out. Boom. They're pretty cool. I mean, they look, they look goofy, but like, get over it. <laughs> I saw a lot of people in London on Bromptons, which is cool because they're made in England. At least they used to be. I think, I think. Um... How much does a Brompton weigh? Let's find out. It, it depends on the bill, but. I don't know anything about the knockoffs. I really only know anything about Bromptons and not even that much. They might be, they might be good. 24 pounds, which is not light, but it's not that bad. Also, I think you can, you can wheel them around. Someone you work with had their bike stolen one there at the library and they wandered around the city and literally found it and took it back. That's actually with a lot of the bikes that are part of like bike, um, that are part of like bike. Um, actually, I'll get back to that spirulette. Um, like bike clubs and stuff. So when someone's bike gets stolen, the bike clubs put out like messages. There was a guy, I this is maybe slightly embellished, but I'm pretty sure it's true. So... Golden Saddle, rest in peace, <coughs> bike store in Silver Lake. <coughs> they send out a lot of stuff about bikes being stolen. And there was a case where someone from Golden Saddle recognized a bike in the back of a truck that was driving around a city. And when the bike stopped at a stoplight, they jumped in the back of the truck and they grabbed the bike and jumped out and rode away on it. <laughs> like they, they stole it back, basically. Um, which is cool. Uh, don't mind looking silly. You don't want to lose immediately lose your investment by going inside a store for half an hour. The other thing I will say is, um, if you lock up your bike, there's a couple of things. The Sheldon Brown bike locking method. So, this is, this is good right here. Hold on. Bike insurance. I, I've, I don't know. I've never had bike insurance. I just try to not get my bike stolen. I had my bike stolen as a kid, but ah oh man, this is really low res. So this is a pretty not foolproof, but a pretty good, like time is the enemy of thieves. <laughs> Thank you, Uliu. So this is a good combination. You get a decent, not a super long, not a super tiny U-lock. This is a U-lock because it is in the shape of a U. <clears throat> and you lock through the rear triangle the wheel inside here to there. What this means is that the frame can't be taken and the rear wheel cannot be taken. But then you also have a cable that is attached to the U-lock and that goes through the front wheel. 
So that prevents your front wheel from being stolen. Um, again, with time, anyone can steal anything. But a U-lock and a cable used together in this way specifically is a great deterrent to casual bike theft. <clears throat> again, time, if it's overnight, if it's like whatever, um, people will find a way to steal it. You can break, you can break anything basically. Um, people can also steal. Here's other things I will say. Quick releases. Quick releases are not good if you don't want to, if you're in an area that has high theft. That means quick release seat post. Someone can walk by, flip the quick release, and steal your whole saddle and seat post. That easy. If your front wheel is not locked and there's a quick release, they can just steal your front wheel or rear wheel, but it's really easy to steal the front wheel. The bike isn't getting stolen if it's beside another bike that isn't locked up quite as well. Usually true, yes. <coughs> oh. Currently researching I in a young person's guide to drinking two bottles of wine in one evening. Nice. General thoughts on e-bikes. Um, I think they're very useful. I understand the appeal of them. I'm a little worried about their longevity because they're powered by lithium ion batteries. And I am worried that in about 10 years, a lot of these lithium ion batteries are either going to explode or malfunction or whatever and need to be replaced and it's going to be hard. And uh, yeah, that's, but I, I think they're cool. I'm glad, I am very glad that I see so many more people on bikes, even though many of them are e-bikes because it makes drivers more aware that people on bikes exist. <laughs> You've had a Tommaso Imola for six years now. Your gears never really worked though, even though you took it to get it serviced. Would you recommend getting new gears or derailleur? When you say the gears don't work well, what do you mean exactly? If it makes people bike that wouldn't otherwise, it's a good thing. Yes, I agree with that. They're very, very common in my neighborhood because my neighborhood and the neighborhood south of it are fairly wealthy. And so there's a, there's a lot of people that spent a bunch of money to get... Um, if we move towards right to repair, do you see this being less of an issue or is the problem with lithium ion batteries? Um, you know what? I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a suspicion. It's, I'm not, I'm not anti it. I just worry a little bit because there's no standard, you know, like all these companies are making, there's so many companies making e-bikes and they all have different battery form factors. They all have different bike form factors. And I just worry about, um, the batteries are eventually going to need to be replaced and how they how they break down and die and how they get replaced is a um is a concern it's a thing that i'm worried about <clears throat> i don't think it's necessarily going to be the end of the world but there are just so many of them some gears would never select you could only use three or four combinations could never figure out if it wasn't aligned or the teeth were brent and i just couldn't tell is it indexed shifting meaning when you shift is it like tick 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 or is it like smooth friction shifting? If it's a fad, then those companies might not be in existence by the time the batteries fail. Again, yeah. Lithium ion batteries just have a shelf life. They can only go through many charge cycles, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people love going on tours with e-bikes. They're fucking cool. Cargo e-bikes are also very cool. Think the Bosch battery system where the battery easily comes off is a great idea. Yes. Yeah. If there's a standard or it moves towards a standard, like, so here's the thing, like, you know, the, in the, and not even the early days of cycling, but like the middle days of cycling, like the mid 20th century, going into the late 20th century, there were different standards for like every fucking thing to the point where there really weren't standards. So uh, what is the width of a bottom bracket? Is it 68 millimeters? Is it 78 millimeters? Oh, let's find out. Is it is it English threaded? Is it Italian threaded? Is it Swiss threaded? 
Is it French threaded? Completely different thread pitch standards. Fucking infuriating. What's the headset size? Or I'm sorry, what is the stem size for the headset? Is it normal British, which is 22.2 millimeters? Or is it French, which for no fucking reason is 22.0 millimeters? And it just was like, God fucking damn it, dude. It's so annoying. Like I work on vintage bikes a lot. And that has got to be one of the most irritating fucking things like different thread pitches, different diameters, different, all that stuff is different. And at a certain point, everyone said, Hey, uh, all these standards, like 90% of these standards are really fucking stupid. The French standards are dumb. Everyone hates them. We're going to go with British. <laughs> We're going to go with British standards for most of the stuff because it seems to be pretty good overall. Most seat po posts on road bikes are 27.2 millimeters. Most stems are 22.2 millimeters. Most bottom brackets are 73 millimeters, English threaded. Most rear dropouts are 130 to 135 millimeters. So as the stuff gets standardized and like with batteries, as it gets standardized, it's going to be better. I just, <coughs> because of COVID and the huge boom of e-bikes, <coughs> excuse me, I'm concerned that there are not standards now. So if they form, that's great. But then all the bikes that currently exist aren't affected by that. Oh, I'm sorry, Cyber June. I fucking blew it. I blew it. Cyber June. Um, you know what? Hold on. Cyber June, there's one. Good night, Cyber June. I'll post something on Twitter because it's still, it's tricky depending. I mean, like LA is so big and there's so much variety and where you can ride and what kind of, bike. like it's hard, but I will do, there's some really good shops. How about this? I will say the Cub House is a great bike shop. I will, I'll post some stuff later on Twitter. It's, it's a complex question because LA is such an unfriendly cycling city. Sorry. Herb Master, I do still work at Obsidian. Oddbox, my cat's name is Sesame. Oh, I need to go back to her. Hold on. There we go. She's not even looking at anything. She's looking at the book, <coughs> the side of the bookshelf. Whew. All right, where were we? Cross lightning bolt. Vela orange cranks, that's nice. Vela orange, that's good. See, this is not bad. Like, this is right at the edge. So this is like max wrap. So where you see, this is on the big chain ring here. And then it's on the second or it's on the third biggest cog. So when it gets to this, this is start going to start to get this way. And it'll be fine. But when this goes badly, this whole derailleur can rip, <laughs> rip out. It's very bad. So don't do that. All right. I think I can do this for another like 15 minutes or so. Very fascinating, of course. Um, roommate ordering pizza. I just had pizza tonight. Leftover. It was great. Bird or Lime e-scooters. <clears throat> I think I want to say that a bunch of us when we were in Cologne, because our hotel was quite a ways away from the Konmesa, which is the convention center, I think we used, were they Lime e-scooters? They were some scooters and they were actually pretty good. They were pretty useful. Gears are index shifting. So, um, G churnin, um, that is weird. Like I'm a little, con I'm, I'm a little concerned that possibly your rear derailleur hanger is bent. 
And you said it was a, not a Tomasini. Thank you, Okara. I think by next year I might have my, I don't know if I'll go next year because I don't have a game to promote. <laughs> but if I go next year, I'll hopefully have my Velo Orange build. <clears throat> and then I can bring that. But thank you. I want to see, I think if I, I can't believe this year when I went to Cologne, I was going to try to find um, Laura Kampf's, Laura Kampf's um, house, her like insane house, <laughs> House Lisa Lotta. But I don't, I don't know where it is. I guess I can be like a crazy person. I know it's somewhere in Cologne. Tomasa Imola. So, actually, let me look up uh, Tomaso Imola. There we go. Oh, is that it's is it aluminum, or is it an earlier one? Is it a, a an older steel one or a newer one? Like what year is it? Sorry, I guess I should just ask what year it is. Because, I mean, a model name can be used for a long time, even if the bike actually changes a ton. I just want to see what the derail... Aluminum, okay. So, if you have 2013... Okay, here we go. Good night, Yap. Oh, no. Let's go to Bike Index. <clears throat> nice odd box. Dude, I'm going to fucking kill you. Thanks for the non drive side version of the. I love that picture. Always take your picture from drive side. When you take pictures of bikes, take them from drive side. That's my, that's the rule. What? No, it's not even the right bike. I'm losing my mind. You always take them from the top. Nice. Okay, so hold on. So G Chernin, removable derailleur hanger. No, that's not what I fucking want. So most most bikes, most older bikes have fixed derailleur hangers, which means that the derailleur hanger is integrated into the frame. It is not a separate piece. Here you can see that this is a removable derailleur hanger. Many newer bikes have this so that if that piece specifically gets bent or broken, which can happen, you can just replace the hanger. It's especially useful on a carbon bike or an aluminum bike because aluminum is a fucking pain in the ass. So if you possibly check out your rear derailleur hanger, this piece, the piece that the derailleur attaches to, there's a possibility that that piece specifically is bent out of shape you might be able to replace just that piece. And then, fantastically, hopefully, if your derailleur itself is fine, thread that in and that might fix your problems. And the derailleur hanger itself is usually a pretty inexpensive piece and it's not that hard to replace. So, try that, maybe. I can't find pictures that are detailed, but it kind of looks like maybe it has a removable derailleur hanger as a separate piece. So I would try that. 
when, yeah, when something has been tuned up and it still doesn't really shift correctly and just doesn't go into gears and it's indexed, to me, that usually means that something is not lined up properly. It means that either the, either the axle is not sitting properly in the dropouts. Yeah, don't, don't do that yet. Cause I, I mean, I bought a, I, I bought like a 1973 Bertam and it, I bought a 1973 Bertam, uh, Cyclo Tourist and it was not shifting well. And it was just the derailleur hanger was bent and it was steel. And I took, and it was a separate piece. And I took a, uh, I took a, I took a, um, vice grips and I literally just bent it and it was fine, <laughs> but that was steel. Don't do that to aluminum. <laughs> And arguably don't do it to steel. Don't do what I'm saying unless it works. If it doesn't work, then I told you not to do it, but it worked for me. You had issues shifting the past when your chain was worn out and stretched. Yeah. If you have an old chain that could also do it. Do I think greenish yellow is a good accent color for a mostly blue color palette? Yeah. I'm colorblind, but sure. I mean like <laughs> my bike, um, where's my bike? Like this bike, this bike is yellow. This is kind of a greenish yellow, right? With blue accents. So yellow with blue, it's kind of a green maybe, right? I don't know. I can't see green very well, but maybe it is. Mustard yellow. Sure. Yeah, I think that's what it was described at. Forgot you have flux on. Whoops. Yeah, there's blue. So the blue is in the bot. The, the cable housing is blue. The bar ends are blue. This is blue. The light is blue. Um, bottles are blue and the pump is blue. The van also has a secret sound. All right, let's look at one more ad before we wrap this up. What should I look up? Any brand that I recommend for leisure riding? I don't know. It's so weird. Like, I don't even know. I feel bad. <laughs> Le Monde? You want me to look up a Le Monde? I would, yeah, I wouldn't say a Le Mans is a great for leisure riding. Let's look at some Le Mans. Oh, a pop rad. Yeah, baby. This is what I want. This is not my size though. What is up with the fucking... Yeah, there's something going on with dark mode. I think it's making the images. Greg LeMond is America's one true cycling hero. By the way, the only American to win the Tour de France. Greg LeMond. American hero. And his bikes were made by Trek while Trek was sponsoring um, Lance Armstrong, who is a huge piece of shit. And um, Trek basically destroyed the brand because... Um, Lance Armstrong is insanely shitty and an awful human being and fuck him forever. He sucks so fucking bad, dude. Like it's not even about the doping cause tons of people were doing it. 
That fucking guy basically tried to ruin people's lives. Tried to ruin Greg LeMond's life. Fuck you, dude. Anyway, LeMond Bikes. I had a Buenos Aires for a while. It was Leonard, um, or sorry, uh, uh, sorry, Reynolds 853. It was quite nice. I like LeMond's. They have an interesting geometry because Greg LeMond has kind of um, unusual proportions, if I remember correctly. Like, it's like extra long top tube or extra short top tube or something. It was really weird. But these pop rads are cool. These are neat bikes. Mm, Optuez. Again. Sorry, I got to do this to make the images appear. Didn't he also treat his life like shit? There's not many people he didn't treat like shit. It's fucking crazy, dude. It's fucking wild. Yeah, the thing is, like, a lot of those people admitted that they were doping. It's just Lance Armstrong refused to... Not only refused to admit that, but he also tried to fuck up everyone <laughs> who said, by the way, he's doping. The entire top tier of cycling for like 15 years was very clearly all doping. I don't, I'm not into pro cycling because it's dope, Bill. Yeah, I, they're also just nice. They're nice. They have a nice aesthetic to them. Again, I think these are all Reynolds 830, 853, sorry. It's just, which is a really nice steel. It has a nice stiffness to it, but it's still light. He did sell a lot of cool bracelets. That's right. Zurich. There's a lot of Le Mans on here. Dude, okay, the dark mode thing is getting really tired really fast. For gear sets, any recommendations? Are you talking about specifically cassettes in the back? In Germany, you, you call the Tour de France Spritztour durch Frankreich. <laughs> Have you seen, Okara, have you seen uh, Hulin Tour about the uh, T-Mobile the team? It's rough. <laughs> it's hard to watch. <laughs> cassettes are gears. Cassettes, cassettes and free wheels have gears. Um, I mean, the front chain ring, like these are kind of gears. So just want to make sure I know what, I, what we're talking about. What are recommended in a city with a lot of hills? Um, what's your... Spiralette, are you asking what kind of bike or what gearing? So there's a lot of questions flying around. Le Mans often have kind of nice paint schemes. They're, they're simple, but they're, they're just kind of nice. They're pretty, pretty colors, nice paint. Yeah, baby. 853. Cassettes. Wouldn't you need to change everything, though? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, I mean, Shimano cassettes are... So, G. Chernin, what is your cassette right now? Bike, since you haven't gotten one yet. So, Spirulette, I would recommend in a city with a lot of hills that you should not probably get a single speed. You should get something that has <clears throat> not big, big gears in front. So the typical mix is 5339 for a road bike. That's too much. That's too high. That's for flat riding. Um, 50. God, what's the, what do people have now? It's like 50, 5034. Chain rings in front, 50, 34, and then like in the back, probably going up to at least 30 teeth in the back. So you want a geared bike that has a rear derailleur. 
Yeah, 53 is silly. So like 50, 34 or 46, 30 is also very nice, but it's hard to find. Um, and then for your gears in the back, I would say something like 12 to 30. But, um, so, uh, sorry, who is, uh, G Chernin, um, Shimano cassettes, Shimano makes very good cassettes. Either your bike is, either your bike is Shimano or Campagnolo geared. You either have a Campagnolo cassette on the back or I guess technically there are Campagnolo compatible, but Either you have a Campagnolo cassette on the back or you have a Shimano or SRAM, which is Shimano compatible cassette on the back. So don't replace it with a not like thing. Like if you have a, if you have a Shimano or SRAM, do not replace it with Campagnolo. If you have Campagnolo, do not replace it with Shimano or SRAM. It will not work. It will be bad. Don't fucking do it. Um, you need, if you have indexed shifting, you need the same number of gears. So if you have a 2013, you probably have an 11 speed cassette in the back. Maybe it's a 10 speed. Get the same number of gears. You can't, if you have indexed shifting, don't fuck around with that. <clears throat> and then if you want to change the range, then you do have to do research. You have to look at your rear derailleur, the max cog it'll take, the max chain wrap it'll take, um, and you need to do a bunch of math. It's tricky. You don't necessarily have to change everything. If you're careful and smart, you might be able to just replace the cassette, but it's not, it's not always straightforward. It's sometimes tricky. All right, folks, let's look at one more LeMond and then I'll wrap it up for the evening. I don't know if I've been useful to anyone at all, <clears throat> but alas, that's the way it goes. Yeah, these are just nice bikes. Yeah, the alternative to index shifting is friction. This Zurich is nice. I don't think any of these are my size, though. Great. Thanks for the pictures. My size, my frame size is like 59 to 62. Um, Amalex, when you, when you shift the gears, if, if it's, if it's a, if it's, um, if it's like integrated into the brake lever, it's indexed, it's always indexed. So if it's like, here's your brake lever and you're doing like click, 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 click then that is index shifting. If it's a lever, if it goes through discrete, like tick, 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 that's indexed. If it's smoothly moving, like that is friction because it's just wherever you put that lever. So if it's indexed, it's actually an index, like tick, 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 tick. So you'll feel it. It'll be like tick, 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 tick. If it's friction, it'll just slide like won't be, it won't be labeled. It just feels different. It feels very different. All right. I'm going to look up one more. What can I look up? What can I look up? What weird thing can I look up? I am, uh, I am six feet, two inches tall, 188 centimeters. All right, you know what? My last thing I'm going to look up is going to be Mercian frames. <coughs> no, no Mercians. Hold on. How about a Columbine? <coughs> no, how about an independent fabrication? Boom, crown jewel. This is some stuff. Look. Ooh, 
I don't see, I don't dig carbon bikes, but looks are nice. Looks are nice. I just, I'm not, I don't dig this vibe. Independent Fabrication Crown Jewel. That's their top of the line. Not quite my thing, but there are really nice bikes. <coughs> Steel. Here we go. Hold on. Was there a weird seat clamp? This is nice. Here's that White Industries um, crank. That's really nice. <clears throat> Bertoni. I bet there's some Bertonis in here. What the hell? <coughs> Do I have a specific preference between metal frames? Yeah, steel. No Bertonis. How about a Falcon? Uh, no, that's not what I meant. Here we go. Here's a nice old Falcon. Yeah, baby. That's classic. This is such a perfect classic Falcon. This light blue, white, red. Ooh, baby. That's like the quintessential Falcon road bike of the 70s. Maybe the 60s as well. Have I bought or sold bikes on Craigslist before? Yes, many times. They're pretty bikes. And Falcons usually are not expensive and they're really nice bikes full reynolds 531 steel if i recall correctly these are prugnot lugs i think pretty they're chromed they usually come with good components it's got that's a campagnolo headset campagnolo record headset campagnolo nuovo record brakes campagnolo guides these are Campanella Nuova Record <clears throat> down tube shifters. Campanella Nuova Record. These are fucking shitty rear derailers. They suck shit. Fuck old Nuova Record rear derailers. They're fucking worst rear derailers that can't, like, oh my God, they suck so fucking bad. Especially if you pair them with bar end shifters. Dog shit. Almost every other rear derailleur made in the 70s, especially, is better than this fucking garbage. But they're on every goddamn fucking bike. <laughs> they're, you, they're on like every fucking 70s bike. Because the alternatives were Ure. Um, fuck, what is the other French... The ones that use Delrin and everything. So you get Ure, you get... Why can't I think of the other French derailleur manufacturer? Hold on. Not Sax. That's what I'm thinking of. God damn, why is it? It's not your right. But there's another one that's like, basically they use Delrin plastic in like a bunch of their components. And when they were new, they worked very well and they shifted fucking great. And um, then all the plastic broke. <laughs> all the Delrin parts aged and broke. And they're like, wow, this fucking sucks shit. And then you have Shimano, which was getting better during this period. And then Sun Tour, which Sun Tour was the shit from about the mid seventies into let's say the mid eighties, late eighties Sun Tour, especially superb with an E at the end. That was the fucking shit, dude. Sun Tour components. So good. Way, way better than Shimano. Way fucking like light years ahead of Campagnolo. Simplex. I'm sorry. Simplex. Simplex used, Simplex were good derailers, <coughs> but they used Delrin plastic in a lot of their components and it failed. When they worked, they worked really well, but the Delrin plastic was a fucking super weak point. Sun Tour though was fucking king. But the thing is, this was what racers used and so everyone got it and they fucking suck shit. These are good cranks though. 
These are Campanile cranks. This is like 144 millimeter BCD, I think, which is typical. So you got like a 5242. Uh-huh. Nice classic Brooks. Oh, I'm sorry. These are, oh man, look at this. This is, no, this is Nervex. These are Nervex, chromed Nervex lugs. This is fucking good. Look at this shit. Boom, 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 boom. Like these are some of the nicest lugs. They're nicely thinned toward the ends here. So it's a really graceful transition into the tube. That's the stuff, dude. This is a little sloppy back here, I'll admit. But that's 1970s frame construction. What are you going to do? They were making these things super fucking fast. Ooh, this, this lug shore is not fantastic, but this is nice. Falcons, they're nice bikes. Underrated, but they're, they're fantastic. All right, everyone. So let's see. That's the end. I don't know if that was at all helpful or entertaining to anyone at all watching the stream, but oh well, you're not paying for it, so too bad. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, maybe next time I'll play a game or do something else that's somewhat more interesting. But that's it for tonight, and uh, enjoy and have a good rest of your weekend. Goodbye.